Hello. Welcome to the last step, the last show on Sunday. Happy to have Frank here again. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was uh it was interesting up till today's show. I've had, you know, this is whatever my fifth show. And I've had this anticipation before and like sometimes it would happen a half hour, fifteen minutes, and today like it wasn't there at all. And I went into the bathroom and I was just like getting ready and that line from the course, you know, anticipation plays no part at all for present confidence leads away. And it's like, it's this confidence, but it's not in my own power. It's like this confidence that the words will come through. And it's funny. Then I sat down with Frank and I said, Hey, well, this is the stuff that was coming to me. And he's like, well, I heard we shouldn't read so much. And I was like, all right, well, I, I heard the opposite. <laughs> so I had someone say, Oh, I like it when you read from the book and make some comparisons. So not sure how it'll go today, but I actually had, yeah, it's funny. I had, I actually wrote over and we had this idea of last week when, when Andy and Nicholas uh, shared, I was like really touched about, and I shared this with uh, my wife, Susanna, a lot that my practice in the morning and at night is from the big book of AA and it's pages 84 through 88. And the way it lays out the discipline of the mind, really what it is, it's mind watching and asking for guidance. So it's essentially talking about what guidance and how you practically follow guidance. And when I heard their show, I'm like, oh, maybe I should share that. And, you know, I actually rewrote those pages a bit to take out the words like alcohol and certain things so that it could really reach more people. And it's no uh, coincidence that when I met Frank, it was amazing. We had this instant connection and it was funny. We were starting to work on an intro for our show. And we went down to Ahi Heek and we're like, it was really cool. We're like, <laughs> like, Jason came down to film us and it felt like, I mean, this is probably beyond all of you guys. I mean, maybe a few of you remember Tom Hanks's first show, which was Bosom Buddies. And they had that intro where they were like going around. <laughs> so it felt like with us like walking down by the water, but it was like, it was really cool just to, uh, I haven't finished it yet. So that'll be uh, for next week, hopefully next with, week. with a song. Intro. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was no, uh, we went to another meeting actually, Frank and I and another friend of ours. And it was actually a great meeting. It was that the topic they came up with was how do you stay in the now? And it's like, well, that's essentially what step 11 is. And that's actually, you know, what you've always talked about was your favorite step or yeah. what you focus on. Yeah. I think it's, uh, it's the most important step because I, I feel I'm really at a, advantage uh you know in the course and in this community having gone through aa because you really you know in the beginning you really have to let it out you have to be honest if you don't then you just don't make it you know so uh, 34 years ago it was pounded into me you know just let it out and um you know to me the steps are really it's a very deep teaching and you know it's really all there but it doesn't go into the depth that the yeah. the, the lessons go you know of, of, of the course um but the the structure is the same you know you you just um uh, you know step four is made an inventory and then you know admit you read it to to another human being and God, you know, and, and that, that was, you know, I have to say, I probably most of the stuff, you know, that was really weighing on me, it came out then. Uh, here, you know, I just go much deeper into being authentic. Um, and I had to be, you know, we went to this uh, meeting on Thursday and the topic was now. And I started feeling very uncomfortable. Said, you know, I, now I'm in, in the course, I'm in this community. And uh, am I really in the now? You know, I had to, to, and I wasn't. You know, I was thinking, okay, what am I going to say when it's my turn to share? You know, and all this stuff, because my, my mind is very active. And really bringing myself into the now is, is, is some of the deepest work I can do. And what I use often is just, you know, before I go in, is to be here, and I use my senses. And I say, you know, um, what's you know, what are the sounds? You know, what are the smells? What are, what are, what does the temperature feel like on my skin? And then once, 
And then I realized, you know, this, this is the only place I need to be. There's no other place to be but here. And with the busy mind of the alcoholic, you know, there's always somewhere else I think I need to be. And that's, that's really essential to get to that point. And then I can go in. But, some, but I can't go in without being here, you know. And, and I have to say, I struggle with that still. Mm. But, but we have the, the, the um, you know, we have the tools. And there's very simple tools. Another thing is I learned to observe my mind, you know, and become, become the, the, the observer. And then I'm learning more and more, but the observer is the Christ, you know. And anything else that's there is just some, is my mind playing out some scenarios. Right. And, and that's, that's a huge step for me. Um, it became very clear to me yesterday with the movie again, you know, that it's all a scenario. You know, I, lo- I really get so much out of the movies, you know, and I have to say this movie watcher guide and all this, I really can't recommend that enough because it takes you so deep and it's fun. <laughs> you know, it's not, um, it's not, um, it's not studying anymore. Before I used to study all my teachings. And I thought that, you know, the form of meditation I had any work. I mean, it was a, a, it was contemplative meditation. So I would read something. I wouldn't study it in a, in a uh, academic way, but I would read something and then I would put the book down and really let what I read, um, you know, sink wherever it needs to go. And, and I still do this with the lessons and the lessons actually instruct to do that. So, you know, a lot of people in, in, when I bring up the, the 11 step, which is we sought through prayer and meditation to approve our conscious contact with God, praying only for his will for us and the power to carry that out. So that's so absolute. What, there's no room for Frank anymore. And I don't want room for Frank anymore. I want Frank to be replaced by the Christ, you know, which is really my true identity. But often, you know, that gets pushed into the background again by the ego. And then I think I need to do all these things. And here I'm learning, although we do a lot of things here, but because there's a lot of functions we have, um, but we do it. But it's not about these things, you know, it's about these relationships we have and, and things come up and then we, 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 we um, talk, you know, we let them out, we talk about it, we air them, and then we can offer them to God. And this is really also the bones of, of the, uh, uh, of, uh, you know, the 12 steps. And often when I go to meetings and I talk about the 11 step and my experience, people come to me and they say, wow, you know, not many people talk like you. And then they ask me, can I call you? And I say, yeah, and we, I give them both. Sometimes I start them off on, on Eckhart Tolle's Power of Now because I don't want to hit them uh, with, a, with, a <laughs> with a course right away. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, a tradition that says, you know, what is it? Can you, <laughs> can you, <laughs> I, 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 you know, we're not affiliated with any religion, you know, and, 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 um, and so we have, you know, we, we have to be subtle with this stuff. And I, then I ask, uh, uh, I ask spirit, okay, I, I have a story. Actually, it's about Kenny. I see him there on the screen. Uh-huh. And, you know, I was, I was in New Mexico uh, in, for, for Christmas. And I was, uh, you know, so, so my, my mantra is always in the morning, you know, what do you want me to do today? Where do you want me to go? Who do you want me to talk to? What do you want me to say? And so, so Kenny came to pick me up with, with an Uber, but I didn't know him. So, so I walk to his car and I say this mantra. And then I get in the car and I see that he had a little NA sign. So I say, hey, we're in the same club, you know. But I also was asking spirit, should I stay in Santa Fe or should I go back with my girlfriend and my daughter on whatever date? 
And so I see this, uh, and so I said, oh, yeah, what club? I said, well, the, the NA. So, and I told him that I've been part of starting NA in, in, in France in 84. And um, so he said, come to my meeting. So I went to the meeting and I shared. And three people came to me and said, can you share at my meeting too? So there was the answer, you know, I'm staying in Santa Fe. Uh, for another week or however long. And this is how my life is. You know, what do you want me to do? And then, you know, I learn more and more. Don't make any plans. So, uh, so I thought, when, when should I mention this to Kenny? You know, the, the, I, you know I mentioned the power now. And, and, and so the second meeting I had to speak, or went to speak, there was a guy he talked about, and it's the first time in a meeting I hear somebody talk about the course. He talked about Marion Williamson's book, Return to Love. And then he said, you know, but she comes from this thing and it's a big book like that. So this wasn't going to happen for me. And I, on the way back, you know, um, in the car, I said to Kenny, you know, that book is what she was talking about. I mean, there was my cue. That book she was talking about, that's the course. On three days later, Kenny was with me at a, at a, a ACIM meeting <clears throat> in Santa Fe. <clears throat> now he's watching this. He's already done the, the online retreat and he's coming, he's coming for the retreat. So, you know, this is, uh, it's all orchestrated, you know, and I'm just there. And like David said, just show up, you know, show up. And, uh, <laughs> and then these miracles happen. Um, but I just ask when, when is the right time? And sometimes I don't, don't mention it yet, you know, and, um, and so, so this, was, this was a beautiful story. I'm, I'm very, I'm so happy. And I'm, every Sunday I see Kenny's face up there. So it's, it's really cool. But, you know, it's that guidance that comes. And I'm only there for this. You know, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? And, uh, you know, knowledge for his will for us and the power to carry that out. There is a lot of fear that I had of God. And I see that in AA a lot, you know, because there's all this uh, uh, unworthiness and, and people, a lot of people believe in an outside God. And then when I speak, say, you know, I, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in a God. And I said, I'm with you. I don't either. You know, there is no God out there watching us. And, and I, it's here, you know, it's right here. It's inside. I have to go in. And that's where I found God. And if I don't go in, I never experience that love. And if I don't experience that love, I don't know that I can trust, you know, because step three asks me, hand my will and my life over to the care of God. If it's a punishing guy up there in the sky, I don't want to do this. You know, it said, um, it's, it says, uh, you know, there's, and we read it at every meeting, there's one that has all power. And that's such a powerful thing. And then it says the word, that one is God. May you find him now. This is, wow, <laughs> there it is. But the way I heard it in the beginning is, there's one that has all power. That one is God. And I thought, good for him. I hope he <laughs> likes me. So I'm going to be good. And, and I got so angry and depressed because I was trying to be good. And trying to be good is like holding a spring down. It's like, to, you know, and then suddenly, boom, you know, it comes up and you go into a major binge of bad behavior. <laughs> and it's, you might as well try to control drinking or using, you know, it's the same thing. I can't control it. I don't have to do anything. I just have to show up. You know, I just have to show up and I have to, I have to expose, I have to expose myself and just hand that over. You know, in step 10, in step six and seven, it says, you know, it talks, I don't like the word. It talks about our character defects and I really don't like, like this word, but, but um, so that's what it says. You know, we, 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 we look at them and then we ask God to remove them. And then myself, and I bet a big percentage of 12 step members try to fight them. You say, okay, now I do this, I got it, so, ah, and I got to stop it, and it doesn't work. But, but it doesn't say that in the book. It doesn't say, now you have to behave. Don't do this anymore. It doesn't say that. It just says, okay, eventually you come to step 11, and then 
you connect and you heal. That's what it is. You heal, you know, because you connect with God. And we have to do it. And every time I go to meetings and I talk about it, there's a big part of the room that responds. Yeah, I know I should meditate, but I don't. And, you know, people with 20 years or, or so, how can I ever get to trust that, you know, God, which for me is the inner Christ that is total love and cares about nothing but love, you know, and it's, it's peace. And if I don't feel that, how am I going to hand anything over to that power if I don't trust it? And I only can trust it if I know it. So that step is so essential. And in those moments of meditation and observation and, you know, my lessons and the teachings and being surrounded by this community, I realize it's all thoughts, whatever happens. You know, yesterday um, when David was speaking at the, at, the, at the film, I looked at him and I said, he's not even there. You know, he's just in my mind. But he said, you know, he's an angel in my mind. And then I look at everybody, everybody's, a, you know, and then I look at the things that I'm afraid of. They're not there either. But I have, must have come a long way to manage, I mean, I don't know, the manifest is in, to have, have these angels in my mind because it's all in my mind. And, and what I need to do is heal my mind. And, and the healing of the mind is in the meditation, but it's also in the interaction with this community. Or, you know, my brother, like it says in, in, in the... In, in the in the course uh, text and lesson, you know, I need my brother to atone. I never knew how, why, you know, and now I know because I need to expose. I need to expose, and then you know, you'd say something gets on my nerves, and then I have to expose that, and then you know, stuff comes up. So the no people pleasing rule brings up so much stuff, you know, and that's the cleansing. And then it comes, like even before, you know, I, th I was uh, meditating down there before I came up and then I, I realized, you know, don't, th there was a strong feeling in me that this was about me, you know, this now, and I just exposed it. And I said, you know, it's, it's not about me, but I still think it's about me. So I don't have to, to, um, you know, try to bombard it with some uh, um, uh, what we call spiritual ghosting. You know, it's, I, I have to just say, you know, I still think it's about me. And then I give that to God and I say, just do whatever you want with this. But I, you know, and so some of the things also I'm finding out is some of these things that I still do, even that the spirit uses you know, my, my talents and my, you know, the spirit can use anything. It doesn't rip me out of this and say, you know, you got to be uh, uh, perfect right now or, or uh, totally enlightened. So everything is okay. Everything is okay and I can expose it. And, um, and to me, that's all part of that. It's a big part of the connection, which I, you know, the healing where, the 11th step is a big part of that, but also this exposure all the time is that that's where it is. And then suddenly, you know, miracles happen. Miracles like even just thoughts, like the thought I just explained that I had at the movie yesterday, you know, that's a miracle for me. It just doesn't exist out there. It's only in my mind. And that's where I need to heal it. And I don't even have to worry about how to heal it now because I'm here and it's happening. And that is the big, uh, that, that was one of the big um, lessons for me this week that I realized, you know, a lot of the awakening, I thought I have to make it happen. And I don't, you know. And so 
I hope I went all over the place. I don't know if I stayed with uh, with step eleven, but <laughs> I hoped I was okay. No wonder I wasn't anxious for the show. I don't have to do anything. Literally, <laughs> it's funny because you talk about it, and it's like it's so dear to my heart that step two. But how do we come into that trust? And it's like literally taking these steps mm -hmm. of um, when we hear guidance. You know, it's that listen and follow, and. There's, there's a line in the paragraph on 84 that says, you know, what do I do in the morning? And I ask to be divorced from these thoughts, from self-pity, dishonesty, and self-seeking motives. And I did that from the beginning. I actually started people off on this really early when, they, when I would bring them through the book. I would start them on that because it's never too soon to start praying. And you may not hear the answers as clearly until you've done a fourth and a fifth step and done your amends because you're cleaning out all that wreckage. And then you start hearing them more clearly because... Mm -hmm the guilt is lessened and you're, you're moving through, you know, layers. But that part, you know, when I actually pray every morning and I still do it, the same thing, please, every day, because I have the same, you know, patterns they say in Alcoholics Anonymous, our, our anthem is me, 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 me. <laughs> so we have to actually get away from that, <laughs> that self-thought all the time because that's where the mind wants to go. But with that, you know, what does it look like? Divorce my thoughts from self-pity, dishonest motives during the day, it's not taken away. There's another part that says we ask God at once to remove these character defects or whatever. They're not removed at once. We ask at once and then they're removed to the willingness we're ready to let go of them is what happens. And with that, it's like for me, I started to notice, you know, because all that is those pages as well is mind watching and I'm watching where they actually crop up. And you mentioned people pleasing. That's actually dishonesty. And when I started to see that, it was like, oh, I'm actually not lining up what I feel and what I'm doing. I'm being dishonest. And I could see even thoughts that would come in my mind, whether they're self-pity thoughts or you know, self-seeking thoughts or building my ego. I could see a thought come in. And at the beginning, I would see it come and it would come out of my mouth and I'd be saying it before. <laughs> like I, I was like, oh, there it goes. It's like you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. But I could actually see that this was a pattern that I was saying these things, whether it was a victim thought. And, and here, sometimes one will come out, and, but then it's immediate. Oh, uh, I think that's coming from the victim place or whatever it is. But for the most part, the more we do this, the more we can see the thoughts and then they just sail by. And it's like, oh, okay, I don't have to believe any of it anymore. You know, and that's what you're talking about with this, you know, letting go of what it all we think it means in our mind. Yeah. yeah yes. we, were, we were at the meeting and it was funny, this guy... I shared with uh, a friend that, hey, you know, find someone and go get a phone number and, uh, you know, someone listen to their share and go get their phone number and maybe you can connect with them after. And this is what I did with all my sponsees and my sponsor did with me. And part of what he taught me was don't ask people to do something that you don't do, you know, demonstration. I was like, okay. So I actually, there was a guy that had a beautiful share there and he was actually talking about observing the thoughts and all this. And he was meditating the whole meeting. And I was like, all right. So I went up and I said, hey, you know, uh, what's your number? I'd like to, you know have a connection down here because I'd been to a few meetings, but I don't, you know, I have a community here. So it was like this idea. And I asked him for his number. He's like, Oh yeah. Yeah. He goes, if you want, I can teach you to meditate. And at first I was like, I smiled. I was like, okay. <laughs> so of course that thought came like, is this guy, know? you know, and I actually, it happened quickly, but it's like doing the spirit process in my mind. I had to let go of this, this desire for respect or this belief that, you know, I'm seen in a certain way because I wanted him and you know, be understood. And it's quicker now that I can let go of it. And it was like, okay, yeah, maybe we can do that. I come with, you know, my friend Frank and another friend, and maybe we can, oh yeah, that'd be great. We can meet before the meeting. And then, you know, Frank has shared with me that he runs like even at these big conventions, big meditations in this. And sure enough, I go to him and I say, this guy wants to, uh, wants to meditate with us. Frank's like, Oh, that's great. Let's do it. I was like, <laughs> all right, what a great reflection. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I can trust this, you know? And it's the same thing like your story with Kenny. It's like when you get those prompts, when you get, oh, I'm invited to three meetings. And then that's the trust. You follow that guidance and you see that the reflections come back and you actually see that, oh my God, I can trust this. I can truck this, this voice that I'm hearing. And, and some of the stuff I added into those pages was actually like, it's beautiful the way it's written. Maybe another show will go over the book, <laughs> but it's, there's a part where I always join. That's what we do here is ask them, you know, someone, Hey, I'm hearing this. What do you hear? And then when it's because the biggest fear, and this happened with sponsors, I would always not ask them something because I was afraid they wouldn't give me the answer that I wanted. 
So we would call it answer <laughs> shopping. We'd have three different sponsors and then we ask the one that we would know give us the right answer. But here it's like, we're only hearing one voice and it's only hearing <laughs> what the guidance is. So, you know, that's what we kind of do. Yeah, I've done a lot of answer shopping. And then, and then, you know, I got the answer I wanted. And then I got really resentful to the guy who gave it to me because it turned out, <laughs> it did turn out well. You know? <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, it's, it was humbling for me too, the, 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 that, um, you know, uh, <laughs> that meeting about being in the now. And I think one of the things, you know, in AA, when people come to me and they tell me, oh, where, can, can you work with me? And then I give them, as I said, the, the power of now. But I tell them, you have to promise me one thing. Otherwise, I don't, don't give you a book. You have to keep doing the steps. And you, ha you, know, you have to do this. Because the ego will take something like that and thinks, now I know more than these people. I don't need, you know, I don't need them anymore. And there was a, a moment when um, about five years ago, when I started to you know, study and read uh, Joel Goldsmith, uh, that I felt I don't need to go to meetings anymore. And there was a clear message there. You have something to give, you go to meetings. You know? And I went, and when you said the, and since I live all over the map, I have, many groups that I go to. And there's one group in France where whenever I'm there, they give me 10 minutes to do the meditation. And, you know, so every group I go to, I'm guided and I have, I have a function. And, um, you know, and this has been my biggest gift. And I was going to not go anymore because I thought, you know, now I know a little too much. I know, you know, I don't need to, 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 to go to AA anymore. And, but I don't, you know, I go for me. I don't go to AA because I, I'm dying to have a drink. I go to extend. Mm -hmm. But I go for me because in extending, I heal myself. Mm -hmm. So I love, I love this. And I always get the right words to say. And sometimes, did that just come out of my mouth? Sometimes words that I don't even use in my daily language. Mm -hmm. That, okay, I should have recorded that because that was very deep. <laughs> well, that's against the traditions. <laughs> that is. So actually, <laughs> we're not allowed to do this. <laughs> we don't record. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, you know, it, that's what, it's, I'm just the mouth. <laughs> hmm. I'm being used to, to, to say words, and that's my prayer. What, what do you want me to say? So I hope uh, I did that well just yeah, now. That's beautiful. It's <laughs> actually the one right use of the body is communication. So we're on the right track. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's been another edition of The Last Step. So next week we're going to have music playing yes. now. Yes. Maybe I'll even tell the, the story. Uh, after You've heard it. Week. You've heard. I've heard it about eight times. Right? Okay. Yeah. How, how I came to the song that we're gonna play. Yeah. So we'll have that for next week. And we'll see what else we get into. Um, so I think that's all for today. I see. Uh, I see John out there. John Wetzel. I see Patrick. Ken, nice to meet you officially. Kenny, yeah, we'll meet him. In, yeah. Oh, is that Netta? A month. Yeah. Oh, hey Netta. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I think Kelly. I think there's a Dolores out there too, <laughs> but she doesn't have her camera on. And Mira, and Kelly. Uh, thank you guys. We'll see you uh, when we see you.